but also, for instance, just dancing. To me, dancing is also another form of release. When you dance really hard, you release all kinds of things. Um, I am a massage therapist. I've seen people cry on the table when I'm a massage therapist because somehow by touching certain muscles, who knows what, a lot of emotions get released. So my confusion is we, we are trying to be not a body, <laughs> yet a lot of releases still happen through the body, by the body, in the body. So I'm a little confused on that. I said, okay, I'm not a body, but then again, hmm, that's where sort of everything sort of kind of happens. You know, in quotes. <laughs> so that's my confusion. Yeah, it's quite a mesmerism because, because at different points Jesus talks about the body being nothing and he actually says that um, in one of his workbook lessons, you will tell you have practiced well by this, the body should not feel at all. And so even this confusion around bodies having feelings, bodies having sensation, bodies having cellular memories uh, that maybe get released through through massage or through different yoga practices or maybe through uh, circular breathing, uh, rebirthing. There's so, there's such a panorama of things. But basically, what it all comes down to is everything is mind. And there is nothing physical going on. And now we have quantum physics backing us up and saying that most of what we have believed as humans is very solid, is mostly space even down to the, the atomic level. M most of an atom is just space. It's an itsy bitsy teeny nucleus, and then you've got these electrons swirling around it, and it gives the appearance of something that's like, uh, like a building block, like everyone was saying, you know, the world's made of atoms now, but all the material world is, the atom is the smallest one, but that's not true either, it's mostly just space. So it's good to think of the world as kind of like a figment of imagination in which just like when you go to a movie theater or maybe you stay at IMAX theater that's maybe five or six stories tall and can be very impressive. Or if you've come from the living as an aborigine or the jungle, I'm sure if, if you went to downtown, downtown Manhattan and you looked up at these uh, skyscrapers, they would look to be enormous even though we know that the galaxies are much, much bigger than anything we have on, on this scale. But everything is mental. All sickness is mental. All experiences are mental. And so we have to go through an experience where we get the, what seems to be solid retranslated back into saying that it's all mind. And that's why the basic idea of the Course is ideas leave not their source. Christ has never left the mind of God. And we could say the same with the projected world. It really has not left the perceiver, the mind of the perceiver. It's not like there's seven billion separate minds, because that's what the ego invented. But we could say just in terms of singular mind, the mind, the whole world has not left the mind of the perceiver. So, you can go through experiences and it seems like you can release tension through dancing. That's a common experience um, when, when you feel tight or massage is another good one. There's many, many things and those are all just symbols. It seems like if you take uh, ecstasy or if you take LSD or it seems like if you smoke marijuana and everything, it's also there could be a sense of, of a loosening and a relaxation. But when you get to the cause-effect thing, you start to realize that just like drugs don't really induce relaxation, that's just a reflection of mind, that the mind is ready uh, to be relaxed and it, and it seems to be something that happens for a period of time. Then the mind can go back to whatever its previous state was because there's still more unconscious beliefs. So I think if you just adopt an openness where you say, well, I'm not going to try to, to pin the causation on any form. I'm not going to try to avoid anything, neither am I going to try to feel like there's anything that's my salvation in form. I'm just going to practice being used as a miracle worker. And the more you do that, the sensations of the body that seem to be of the body and the appetites and everything all start to fade away because the mind tells the body what to feel. The body doesn't feel in and of itself. 
it, it kind of contradicts human experience actually because it's it's so strong. But then also mystical experiences contradict human experience because you're used to having kind of a limited, narrow perception of the world and then you have a mystical experience and suddenly it's so vast and you go, whoa, what was that? Or how do I get that back? <laughs> Whatever that was, I want it back. And so you just come around to it. So it's, I think it's just good to adopt a stance of just staying just completely wide open because the Holy Spirit can use anything. But just not taking the next step and starting to interpret that. Because in the ultimate sense, you know, even when I say release, that's still within the ego realm. It's still within the realm of consciousness. And the spirit doesn't release anything. But it's just the mind that's going through this awakening experience seems to let go. And that's why we have all those great phrases, let go and let God. Um, Elton John did a song one time, release, relax, let go. Hey now, discover your soul. <laughs> that was a nice Elton John lyric. <laughs> but, you know, that, that puts it a little bit into a context. So hopefully that mm -hmm. clears it up a little bit there. <laughs>